in a quaint neighborhood on a typical street. There is a house that is unlike the others. Don't let the outside deceive you because inside lives the most marvelous things of spirit boards, hanging dolls, skeleton heads, creatures, and let us not forget one hell of a family. Hey, I'm Rick and Morty Shrek and we're here in Salem, Massachusetts. I just made the world's largest Ouija board that we unveiled today in Salem Common. I'm Kate. I'm Rick's wife from the House of Shrek. <laughs> and we built the largest Ouija board. Hi, my name is Winter Shrek. And I'm Samara Shrek. And we are the daughters of the inventor himself, Rick and Morty Shrek. This thing took me a year and a half to build. It's 99 sheets of plywood. It's about 10,000 pounds. This guy behind me is 15 and a half feet long. He built it in the back of the tattoo shop. Nice little garage back there in the dark. It's like it's a dungeon. My tattoo shop is House of a Thousand Tattoos in Middlesex Borough, New Jersey, right dead center of New Jersey. It was really, really hot in the summer and it was really, really cold in the winter. I was helping him paint a couple times, um, all bundled up, long jacket, blankets on the floors, hats, gloves. You could see your breath. It was it was uh, it was quite a feat. Uh, one panel at a time, four by eight, and it was transported here by Trans American Trucking for me. Since what 2004, he's been talking about it. <laughs> he's always talked about his grandiose ideas to build things, and um, he's definitely an idea guy. It took us three days to set this thing up. It was about 14 hours just doing the framing alone underneath, and the problem was is to get this thing perfectly square. It took a bunch of guys with sledgehammers. It still wasn't perfect, but they made it happen. Uh, today has been so eventful. People are coming and going, just walking through Salem Common. We had a wedding come down here, take their photo shoot. We had two proposals, one today, one last night. Uh, it's, been, it's been crazy. Well, I was pushing this thing around with my family today. It actually moves effortlessly. It's 400 pounds, but you can move it with one hand. I had to cheat, and I put a spare leg in the center, but the cool thing about the column in the center is it's from a funeral home. I lived by these two funeral homes and I dug it out of the garbage. So this is powered by funeral home pillar. I'm just so proud of him, his journey, and to be a part of it. And you know, it's crazy because he's always so hard on himself. And I don't know, he just, um, to see him accomplish something so big like this, it's just been, it's been really, truly amazing. We are both now standing on the world's largest Ouija board and it feels pretty awesome. We're pretty lucky 15 and 16 year olds to be here and have this opportunity. Yeah, I remember uh, this morning we were all drilling the, the wood into the, the frame and now just standing here watching it be complete, it's just, it's crazy. just crazy. I don't even remember. We just worked really hard and then now it's just here. A uh, crazy thing that happened when I first got the wood for this thing is I almost died. Kind of funny, kind of crazy, kind of scary. But these things are 70 pounds a piece, these panels. And I had 10 of them and I was flipping through them to see if they were damaged or uh, good. And the whole thing fell on me and caught me in the stomach. I got pinned against these boards in the wall. And if Kate wasn't with me, I wouldn't be here today. I would have been killed by the world's largest Ouija board. I was there helping him and he um, went in the back room and all the, the big, there was like about 10 boards. I think it's about 700 pounds. They fell on him. And he's calling me, he's like, hey, hey, come help me. So I come and try to help him. And lifting one board is hard for me. So I just, my mom's strength came out of nowhere and I just helped him get out of there. And um, he keeps bragging like he would have been cool to be killed by the largest Ouija board. It's not so funny, but I'm glad he made it through. You know, all through all the mixed feelings and whatnot, it's all about the spirit of Halloween, the spirit of being in Salem. 
spirit of the Ouija board. It brings people together, it really does. This entire event that we had to unveil Ouija was held by the Talking Board Historical Society, which I am grateful to be the vice president of. Our treasurer is a stone's throw away over there at the Salem Witchboard Museum, the only witchboard museum in the world. Hey everybody, my name is John Kozik. I'm a director at the Talking Board Historical Society, and I'm also the owner of the world's only Ouija board museum, the Salem Witch Board Museum, right in the heart of Salem on Essex Street. Uh, this is October right now, so it's already pretty crazy. If you've never been to Salem, you're gonna see tens of thousands of people on the street right now. Uh, in the museum, we have some great items. The first case that's kind of behind me is uh, the very earliest talking boards, manufactured talking boards, starting in 1890, before Ouija even existed, uh, before they came up with that name. Uh, also, 1892, we have an Esperito board uh, made here in Massachusetts. Uh, up on the wall, you get to learn a little bit more about Helen Peters. Helen was not only responsible for helping get the board patented, but she actually asked the board what it wanted to be called back, and it spelled Ouija. So a lot of history here, kind of goes all the way around to um, you know, it's play, uh, Ouija's place in pop culture, influencing TV, music, movies, as well as some stories of murder, suicide, uh, that are all surrounding the board. The oldest board I have is from 1890, and that is uh, Ouija before it was Ouija, meaning that's what Charles Kennard was selling uh, before Helen Peters had asked the board what it wanted to be called, and it spelled back Ouija. Creepiest one? Well, I don't know about the creepiest one. I have people that come in and they feel uh, things to certain boards and I don't personally I don't but uh, the next coolest well the coolest in my opinion is my grandmother's board and that's the board that really set me on the path to collecting and wanting to learn as much as I possibly could about Ouija boards uh, so hers is kind of I give people a hint it's the most well-worn board in the museum I'm a director on the talking board historical society and our group are a registered nonprofit. We research, preserve, and celebrate the history of talking boards. Uh, we're the ones that are responsible for unveiling Ouijazilla over in the common. Uh, we do everything from we've raised money to put headstones in for Elijah Bond, who was the person that patented the, pro the board. Uh, we've raised money to put a headstone in for Helen Peters, who's responsible for not only patenting the board, but actually naming the board. And uh, we've put plaques where the Ouija board was named. We've worked with, you know, Mayor's Office, Historical Societies, all helping to get buildings, factories uh, recognized uh, on historic, historic lists. Um, and every research, all the research we do, we actually share all of that. We don't keep it to ourselves. So if you go online and you learn anything about talking boards, it comes from the research of uh, you know, Robert Murch, Gene Orlando, and Brandon Hodge. Those are the three main guys who uh, have done most of the work researching talking boards. honoring the mother of Ouija, Ms. Helen Peters Nosworthy. It's a beautiful day, it couldn't be even more beautiful than it is right now. And I wanna say just thank you again and welcome to this unveiling. We are in the middle of creating history again. We're taking something that was old from the past, bringing it into the future, and immortalizing it for the, for the uh, way into the future. This is gonna be here forever. And we're gonna always honor Helen Peters Nosworthy. So I have a few thanks I wanna say. Thank you to you guys. But I want to also over here thank Jim Cavato. He's with the Fairmont Cemetery, and he's been critical and crucial to this putting the stone in. Worked so closely with us and with Bob and everybody else here at the Talking Board Historical Society. So my name is Karen Dahlman, and I am a director of the Talking Board Historical Society. And today you're going to be meeting a lot of us directors. We're all here, with the exception of Bob. And I also want to thank Bob because if it wasn't for Bob's us, foresight, I would say, that foresight and his uncovering and the rest of these directors here, uncovering the history and connecting the dots, we would not be standing here today. You know, she was kind of lost in the history and now we're bringing her back up. But Bob, um, his ba back is bad, he's okay, but he's definitely here with us in spirit. 
Now, I also want to give a big thank you to the family. They're over here behind the tree. And we've got the great, great grandson and great, great granddaughter. So Lauren and, and William are here. Their mother, mother is uh, Kay Fettler and her husband Doug. And this is the family members and this is part of their plot here. I'm Kay Willard Fettler and um, my, my great, great grandparents <laughs> share the tomb with the Nosworthy's. Uh, Bob Murch approached us about uh, a possible monument, and here we are all these months later uh, dedicating this. I consider, the reason why I'm here is that I consider the bond between the Nosworthy's and the Hewitt's uh, a friendship one that allowed the Hewitts in the family to extend a place for Helen and her husband Ernst to be interred with them. The original plaque that was on the uh, original tombstone uh, that marked uh, their, their graves. It's a great turnout. People from all over the country coming in to, to honor this lady and this family. Uh, it's just a wonderful turnout. It threw my brother, Robert, um, with my brother Bob Willard having the surname, he traced that to my brother and then I was the secondary follow-up, of course, having married. I'm actually with the Cemetery's History Foundation and we do a number of events. One of them is Famous Women from Colorado. Another one is History Mystery Tours, which we do in September and October. So we're gonna do our best to get Helen on those tours. At the very least, we'll get her involved so people will know where she's at. And again, thank you, Karen, and we're just excited that you guys are here and that we now have this awesome marker. And thank you, family, for letting them do this. Yes. Bye-bye, thanks. Great, and now I'd like to introduce to you one of the other directors of the Talking Board Historical Society, Gene Orlando. Come on up. So this is uh, from the city and county of Denver, Office of the Mayor, and I'd like to read it to you. Greetings. Today you are celebrating the life of Mrs. Helen Peters Nosworthy, who is buried in the Fairmont Cemetery here in Denver. Mrs. Peters Nosworthy is considered the mother of the Ouija board because of the role she played in naming the now iconic game and for securing the patent on the invention. She convinced the official at the patent office to issue the patent after an astounding demonstration that spooked everyone present. She was born in Baltimore, Maryland, and in her later life moved to Denver to live out the remainder of her days with her beloved husband, Ernst, and her adopted daughter, Mary. We join the Talking Board Historical Society in honoring Mrs. Helen Peters Nosworthy in the unveiling of a new monument dedicated to her in Denver's Fairmount Cemetery. Best wishes for a successful celebration. Respectfully, Mayor B. Uh, Hancock, Michael B. Hancock, Mayor. It's nice. So you may recognize these, these are Ouija boards. This is from 1890. This is from today, 2018. A little bit of difference, but still the iconic name Ouija. Now, until recently, we thought that the name Ouija was Ouija, French we for yes, Jaw, German for yes, so yes, yes. And this is what we all thought. If you go online and you look in a dictionary, that's the definition that you're going to get. That is until Robert Murch was searching the archives of the Baltimore Sun, like he often did. And he came upon a series of letters from the actual inventors of the Ouija board, people that put it together. The, um, the, um, the patentee, the, the man who did the patent, Elijah Bond, and the um, uh, first manufacturer, which was Charles Kenner. And they described an interesting situation where they got together and they named the Ouija board. And what was so fascinating about this was, was they were together with um, Helen Peters, who was Elijah Bond's sister-in-law, and they were doing a session and they wanted to ask the Ouija board, because it hadn't been named yet, what is your name? 
and the we just spelled out O-U-I-J-A. And they said, well, what does that mean? And the Ouija replied, good luck. Helen then pulled from her neck a locket. And on that locket was the picture of a woman's face. And at the top of that locket was the name Ouija. So we came all the way from the East Coast for a very important project for us. Um, as you guys already know, we are both directors of the Talking Board Historical Society. And uh, Helen was made in Baltimore and so was this stone. We had it shipped all the way here. And um, it's a great pleasure to be a part of something so much bigger than we are. Uh, long after me and Rick are dead in the ground, we're still gonna have this thing uh, standing uh, with a little bit of a reminder that we worked really hard to get her here. Thanks, Helen. And by the way, I said in an interview one time online, I said uh, Helen A. Peters, and I was like, oh, I said the wrong name. No, it's right. You were <laughs> she told me I was right. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm not that shot out. I'm little, but not that bad. I don't know, it's kind of cool. I want, I want my grave to look like this, but I want like a playable board on there so that people can like mess around with it and try to talk to me. I would have pictured you like a big Baphomet or something mm -hmm. on top. And that too. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, like, there's going to have to be a GoFundMe thing, so you guys think about that. <laughs> Baphomet is a playable thing there. And um, maybe I can have a window where you guys can see me down. Here. Oh, yeah, I'm chipping in. 100 bucks, man. Yeah, I, I, I got that. You got it? Oh, you yeah, got it. I'm in. Yeah, that's it. No, we'll, we'll put on there hashtag House of Shrek. So people will be like, why, why is there a pound sign before that word? And they'll be like, that's what they did. We got to leave your iPhone in there on a live feed. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the horns going and everything. <laughs> You know, I think we're very lucky to be some of Robert Murch's closest friends. Um, I was just telling John, another director earlier this morning that I wish I could be half as passionate about something as him. Bob is in the hospital right now and he was texting John pictures of boards that he thought were connected to something else. Like he's, he's in the hospital working on history right now as we speak. Um, he really does light a fire under all of us. He makes us take this that much more seriously. And it really opens a lot of doors. And I mean, we get to meet amazing people. We get to travel around the world all for, for doing things that people might think are silly and spooky. We're hanging out in a cemetery right now. And um, I never imagined years ago collecting Ouija boards that it would bring me here. It's cool, like a Ouija board and all that, but we're just a bunch of nerds <laughs> yeah. to collect a game that we think talks to ghosts. Yeah. You know? Hey, you know what? Merch, uh, if it wasn't for Merch, we wouldn't all be talking to each other. I promise yeah. you that. Because he's like... No, we might. We might, we might <laughs> a, little, a little bit. You know, um, he's the most generous dude ever. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, all these rabid collectors around here, they'll cut each other's throats to get a Ouija board. And Merch will have two or three of them. And if he knows you were looking for one, he's like, dude, I, I brought you something. You know, and he's done that to me so many times. Like, I, I would never sell him a board. He wants something I got, he's got it. You know, he's just the coolest dude, man. He's generous. And um, when he when he first started talking about this, I was like, man, I didn't know it was going to be this big. Yeah. You know, it's pretty cool. You know, and, and that's the thing, too. Uh, what are there's 10 directors, right? 11. No, there's 11 of us. You know, everyone might think that just because uh, our logo is on it, that the 11 of us did this. This is the culmination of hundreds, if not a thousand people, you know, chipping in a dollar here, a dollar there, yeah. anything that they could afford. Um, this was a very, very expensive project. Uh, transporting something, what, how much does this weigh, man? A couple tons? I, don't know, I can't lift it. Yeah, yeah, we can't lift it. We tried. <laughs> we got hernias. <laughs> but um, just, just traveling alone was very expensive. So um, thank you, everybody who contributed. Thank you, everybody who came out today. We really could not have done it without you. Hey man, come on, like everybody wants to live in a haunted house, right? No? I do. So I got all these things and I tried doing all this stuff to make my house haunted. Uh, when I met John and all the other collectors, I, ha I had, right now I have currently about 120 something hanging on the walls in my house. I believe that if there was one Ouija board that was a gateway into the unknown or whatever, I was gonna make them all in a big square around my house to make my house this like vortex gateway into whatever the heck was gonna go on. 
and no, nothing's really happened yet. So, I just, it's gonna happen here. Yeah, so hopefully we open up the largest gateway ever here, and uh, everybody stay with a partner. If you sucked into it, everybody yell out, my partner's missing, you know? All right, I got a 1989 Lincoln Town Car hearse that I drive. My wife has a hearse as well. The back of mine was ruined, and I made it into a big pull-out table, so I actually have the very first Ouija hearse of its kind. If you ever want to see that, just that big website in the middle, it says OuijaZilla.com. Go check that out, and you'll be able to see my Ouija hearse. That was the biggest board I had ever made. The thing was six feet by eight feet. Six feet by eight, no, six, yeah, six feet by eight feet. Biggest one I ever made. So then I was like, where do I go from here? Inspired by Stranger Things, I made one that was almost two sheets of plywood, and I hung it on the front of my house. And on the back is a keyboard. People can ask my house questions, and my house would answer you with lights. And I did that for Halloween, and the following year I did it for Halloween. And I met these guys here, and they said, yeah, they said, why don't you do something really cool that'll get attention to your house? So I go, all right, I'll hang it in front of my house for Christmas, and I'll dress like Santa and walk around in front of my house and tell the kids, ask you what you get for Christmas. Because bad zombie Santa will tell you, right? And nobody cared. My neighbors are so used to it, it was no big deal. So Robert Murch says to me, well, now you got one. You got a Ouija, a Ouija hearse and a Ouija house. You know, where do you go from here? Are you going to make that big one? And you, I got a buddy that works for Trans-American Trucking over there. They're down in the bottom left corner. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, and I was tattooing him one day, and he goes, dude, if you want to do one of these projects, I'll give you all the wood you need. And I start drawing the plans out, and I'm like, like 99 panels big? And he's like, that's it? No big deal. So this is all this wood has been donated by Trans-American Trucking. Those crates were built by them, the transportation here was provided by them, and all the two by fours underneath were, were provided by them. They're pretty good dudes. Yeah. We got a lot, a lot of really cool sponsors going on the on the outer edges here. You know, there's uh, the Salem Witchboard Museum that just opened. If you haven't gotten over there, you have to. It's awesome. It's owned by John Kozik. Who you at? Guy that hate, the dude that hates public speaking, if you go into his museum, he will you won't be able to quiet him. He will tell you so much about every one of those boards. And the dude is a wealth of knowledge. He's a, he's a true asset to the Talking Board Historical Society and a great friend. Yay, John! And by, and by the way, if it wasn't for him, this was not happening here. Because I was like, ah, we're just going to represent New Jersey and do it by my tattoo shop. Woo! John made this happen. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thank you, Salem. Is Bill still here? There he is. Bewitched in Salem, the only sponsor to buy two panels. They're on both sides. And you know what? I've been coming to this town since 19... City, not town. City since 1992. I came here on a whim with a friend of mine, and we happened to come during the 300th anniversary of Witch Trump. And I was like, this place is off the hook. There were news cameras everywhere. And I didn't know it was because it was the anniversary. I thought it was like every day here. I fell in love with this place, and we've been coming every single year. All three of my kids, they grew up here. My one daughter learned how to work and walk on the steps over there. And, uh, was that Town Hall, Kate? Is that you? Yeah, Winter learned how to walk. We got pictures of her where she's practicing walking. And uh, I fell in love with this place. And the one thing that's been consistent about our journey here to Salem has always been the Witch and Salem. Always. And I, I first was going to uh, Bill's mom's store. She had an antique store, and she was telling me, you got to check out my son's store. He sells these little pieces of, uh, he was selling uh, branches, I right, Bill from uh, Gallows Hill. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. And because I'm such an eBay lunatic too, she told me where, where Gallows Hill Park was, which I never knew where it was. We're over there, we find all these branches on the ground, and I bring them home and I go, where was them coming in some pieces to sell them on eBay? I get a private message from Bill's mom. She goes, I guess you found the park I told you about. Oh, sorry, Bill. <laughs> but yeah, that was a cool idea. Well, what else we got on there? The premier uh, walking tour, ghost tour in Salem, and great guys to be involved with who have a, a wealth of knowledge, who give a great tour, and to sponsor us, to, you know, to not know us very well and to want to sponsor this project that speaks volumes. A woman named Rosa Nil, I met her at Michigan Paracon. She was one of the first people to lose her mind and go, you got to get me on this board. 
So there's two panels there that she actually sponsored. There's her, and it's an individual, and the haunted Hinsdale house over there, which is really, really pretty cool. Uh, who else is there? Michigan Paracon Vinny's is up there. Face. Brad, well, I'm getting a Vinny's oh. face. I'm getting a Vinny's face. <laughs> Michigan Paracon's up there. They were very generous to us, the Talking Board Historical Society. Um, we got to come and speak there. I was speaking there about the board rules. Karen was there talking I'm about kidding. all her stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Karen's stuff. Because I love the Ouija board. She loves the Ouija board. And I'm still convinced that Karen pushes it when she uses it, but she swears it really works. Okay. It really works for me, guys. You can talk to me later about it. I'll tell you all about my 46 years of using the Ouija board, and it works. For real. Not kidding. Rick. Tell yourself. Tell yourself. <laughs> Uh, and who else is up there? Well, there's this place called Bitty Space. Yay, Bitty Space! Yay! Bitty Space. What can I say about Bitty Space? How's the Shrek? How's the Shrek? <laughs> hashtag How's the Shrek? So I promised her because we went to hell and back for this thing that I would slow dance with her on our Ouija board at this event. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. have some spiritual encounters later on tonight. <laughs>